to be heat. Heat 7 of F1 Racing is brought to you by the Hyundai Santa Fe and is presented for Seafair by Graham Trucking, specializing in heavy intermodal container drainage throughout Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Montana. Ah, uh, yes, those boats are at the ready. We're getting set for some serious, fast jitterbug action on Lake Washington. Race time again, Heat 7 of F1 Racing set to go. And here we go, in fact, with Heat 7. See the flag man on... Okay, so he, the cockpits are up right now, and so as we welcome Bill Seabold in. We're looking out at the, those cockpits, and so how long before this process, Bill, really gets started? Well, you'll hear a horn, that's the one minute warning, and then there's a countdown 50, 40, 30, 20. At 20, the, fan, the man on the end of the dock down there will put the white flag up anytime from 20 seconds to zero. He can drop it only at his discretion. Nobody can jump the start. If they do, one lap penalty. But we're certain that nobody's going to start until their lids are down. Yeah, the lids have to go down, and in about 30 seconds, uh, the people behind the boats can hear all the fuel pumps go on. And, when, and, of course, the engines are off, and when he drops the flag, you fire your engine, and you go, and it's a drag race to the far end. So we have seen a number of heats, and it's the same drivers in all the heats, all the same boats. So who is it that you're looking for here? Could somebody who hasn't done so well today really come on strong here in this Heat 7? Well, yes, they could. Like Jose Madonna had nothing but trouble yesterday in five heats. Uh, and then all of a sudden he comes out of the box today and wins at uh, heat uh, six. So, I mean, yeah, there are two or three guys that can do that have been having some problems. I think you and Chip, I was here when you guys were talking a little bit earlier. Chip, you were wondering how to get a hold of one of those uh, outboard motors. <laughs> yeah, they look like uh, something you'd buy at the dealer. I mean, the outside package looks well like you would buy at a dealer, but Billy went on to explain that these are highly sophisticated race engines, not engines that just come out of your local marina. And they can get you up to a speed of what, Bill? Well, here on this course, they're probably running about 128, 129, right at the other end. And then through these chicanes here and the, and the right-hand turns, they're, they're probably about 100, 110. And if you're just tuning in, first time to see these boats, this is not an oval. This is not like unlimited hydroplane racing. They are making right and left-hand turns. One right-hand turn is kind of a chicane, not a really hard turn, but the other one is a very difficult right-hand turn, right, Billy? Yes, it is. The chicane coming up the shoreline stretch, you can float through that. You don't have to really put the boat down. Okay, you can kind of slide the boat through that, kind of like the hydros do. Now, on the right hand or right in front of the... Okay, uh, there, there was a horn. I hate to interrupt you, but we are okay. now within one minute. We're within one minute, okay. and uh, there's, a, there's a flag man that is standing right there on that dock, and they will be watching all the drivers. There he there's is the there. There's the flag man. So, Bill, why don't you walk us through this start? 20 seconds, he puts it up. He can drop it in one second, or he can hold it for 20 seconds and then drop it. And it's uh, once they do that, the engines fire and they're away. Now they're competing for a pole position. So you see them line up on the dock. Some spots are better than others. For the final heat, which is coming up after this one, where you finished in points is where you get to line up on the dock. Yes, that's true. And pole would be on this end of the dock as we're looking at it now. The, the flag is up. The flag is up. Boy, it looks like Greg Foster right there with the brown canopy got off to a great start on the right-hand side of your screen. And also on the far outside, you got Terry Rinker also with a great start. Yeah, and look at Jose Madonna. He was late and way outside. So it just proves what the start can do for you. Now, Greg Foster, we talked about the guy out in front right now. That guy's a wild man. He races anything and everything. He's been out of a boat for two years. There he is out front in Heat 7. Yeah, and if you notice, he went back to his uh, primary boat. He'd been running his backup boat in the last two heats, and uh, the primary boat, of course, has the Mercury on it, and they jumped good off the dock compared to the OMC. That turn you just saw there was what Billy was talking about earlier, how the boat just kind of floats around it. It's not a really hard right turn. Now, that turn that you see right there, that's a pretty hard turn. They have to lower the bow of the boat with the outboard engine to get it to go around. Now they're going around another left-hander coming up on the longest straightaway they see all year. 
Yes, that is a long straightaway for us. Normal race course is about 35 seconds around. This one's right at 50 seconds. What's Greg Foster doing right now in the cockpit? Describe to me what these drivers are doing. Well, actually in a Formula One boat, the driver's doing something with both hands and both feet. Every second the boat is moving. He's trimming it in, trimming it out. He could be raising and lowering the engine for better grip on the propeller. You know, and of course a foot throttle for your for your uh, control of the engine and, and on your right foot and your left foot and out button to make the boat get off the turn. Look how little of the boat is in the water. This is a hard lift turn. The bow comes down. The boat turns. Bow comes up. It's going to bring it back down again for a hard right turn. Bow is going to come up, getting ready for a short straightaway and a tight left hand turn. There's the turn. And now he's on the up button immediately to get that bow to pop up, get the wetted surface out of the water. On the outside, you see Terry Rinker. That guy's probably been the most consistent guy all weekend, Billy. Yes, I think he has. Terry is always tough. He's fast, and he, he drives good and smart. Uh, there are a lot of guys that can be fast and not drive smart, but uh, Terry is one of those guys that has been around forever. He's paid his dues. You were telling me that on this particular course, you could actually have the worst starting position on the dock, where most courses that would doom you for the final but here the way the course is set up uh, really you could win from the worst pole position on the dock yes you can and it's always easier when you race a boat and I think Chip you'll probably back this up it's always easier if you can come from the outside in which means start outside and then come over to take the pin tight but and, and what are you doing to everybody else inside of you when you do that Billy? when you do that you're shutting them down <laughs> all right Terry Rinker on the outside the gray yellow boat Greg Foster on the inside these have probably been the two most consistent guys. That's Terry Rinker there all weekend long. The guy that I really am missing is your son, Billy, Tim. Tim was really strong early in the weekend, but I don't see him up here front. What do you think's happening there? I don't know. You know, he's, uh, he, he, I don't know where he went. He's way back. Uh, you know, I don't even see him on the race course at this time. The one thing unique about Tim Siebel, Bill's son, is he's running an OMC motor. That's actually a white motor. You can see the motor on this boat, Terry Rinker's boat, is a Mercury. They are running the only OMC uh, Johnson outboard in the race. Yes, uh, Tim is running it. And one, one disadvantage that the Johnson has, it just does not fire and come off the dock as quick as the Mercury. Okay, we just saw Chris Fairchild in that Kroger boat, the white boat now, stick his nose in there. So he is now with the top three. So we've got Terry Rinker out front. We've got Greg Foster in second. There in the outside, we've got Chris Fairchild. And there he is, you can't see on the outside. Uh, okay. Steve, Stephen Lee. Stephen Lee in fourth. So both of those guys have come from way back. That tells me they've got the boats to be well. There we go. Yeah, His Fairchild was way back, and now he's up there second, deck to deck with uh, Greg Foster. And you remember the other heat, the earlier heat today, Stephen Lee had problems. He lost his rear fairing, and the motor, the, uh, the racing number is on the rear fairing, and that is a penalty. You know, if there's somebody that's been impressive to me all weekend, it's been uh, Steve Lee. The guys that you're seeing right now, uh, rip lead out for these guys have a ton of experience but Steve Lee does not have that much experience but yet he's been mixing it up with these tough guys all weekend long yes he bought that boat about a year and a half ago and reworked it and basically uh, I think he had Terry Rinker's help in, in learning how to drive it and you know for guys only got a year and a half experience you know he's doing really really well and if you look at Steve Lee in the red boat and Terry Rinker in the yellow boat, you'll see that the two boats are basically the same, the same manufacturer, and both those boats are a little smaller than the other boats out there. Yeah, those, uh, the first two boats, that's uh, Rinker and Lead and Greg Foster there, those boats are about 16, 16, two or three inches long. Uh, Chris Fairchild, who's right on the outside of Foster, that boat's about 17 and a half foot long, built for a 24 hour endurance race in Rouen, France. And everybody's talking about the heat and how hard it is on the drivers. I remember when I was in a boat, you never thought about the heat. There's so much adrenaline. There's so much concentration. You don't feel anything. You're just numb. You know, everybody always asks you about that, and you're right. You just, you just, you don't pay, you don't feel a lot of stuff when you're in that boat, and you have total, total concentration. Steve Lee in that uh, red boat in fourth place is hanging there. He's inside. Well, he just went from fourth to third. Now he's going to start putting pressure on Greg Foster and Terry Rinker. There he is uh, in the Bubba Burgers boat. Steve Lee, not a lot of experience, but he's been driving like a guy that's been doing this his whole life. Yes, he has. And, and it looked like that uh, Chris Fairchild might have had a problem there because he went into that 
left hand turn and he slowed way down. And what can cause that is when you try to run a light fuel load and you're used to making all lefts, now all of a sudden you got to make a 90 degree right hand turn. The fuel gets thrown by gravity to the other side of the tank away from the fuel pickup for the fuel pump. And then the boat will stumble when you turn it back straight and start to go into the left hand turn. We are now uh, on the uh, fourth to the last lap, uh, four more laps to go. That seems like a long race compared to the unlimited, but for these guys, that's nothing. Normally, Billy, your average race is what, 50 lap in a final? The, normally the final is 50 laps, and uh, you know, in, in, in a race like that, sometimes you get a bad start, you can make up the ground, but on a 10 or 15 lap race, you just don't have a lot of time, and you can't give up much ground. Steve Lee in the red boat hanging in there. Greg Foster moving up inside of Terry Rinker. I think he's going to take that position. There's Steve Lee in the red boat, just kind of hanging on by his fingernails. Um, we see Chris Fairchild in the Kroger's, the all-white boat. Uh, these have been the same characters we've seen all weekend, with the exception of uh, your son, Tim Siebel. We uh, would expect to see him up here. We've got three more laps to go, Bill. Yes, I know. And, it, you know, you saw Greg come up on the inside there, and if that would have been the final... I think you would have seen Greg stick his nose on the inside of Terry Rinker there, but you know, he's got to get through this race and then he's got 15 laps to try to do that. And the next time when there's a paycheck at the end of the race, he will do that. So right now, these guys are racing for pole position on the dock. Is the driving style get a little more aggressive in the final heat? And how many more laps in the final? These are 10 laps in the elimination. How many laps in the final, Bill? Uh, there are 15 laps in the final and, and they'll burn about eight or nine gallon fuel in that 15 laps. So you try to calculate the fuel. You obviously don't want to be carrying any more fuel than you have to. I think what fuel weighs about over six, six pounds a gallon. Do they calculate the fuel to run out right at the end of the race just so you don't carry an extra weight? Yes, we do. And, and the only thing that changes that strategy is that right-hand turn. You have to carry a little more fuel for a race course for the right-hand turn. And the other reason they want to be close on weight, uh, on fuel, is because it's weight. Weight is horsepower. 1155 pounds at the conclusion of the race with the driver and a remaining fuel and that's the minimum so if you weigh 1154 you're dnf we have two outs to go you're looking at chris fairchild who looks like he's moved to the lead terry rinker inside of him saying you ain't having this yourself he made terry rinker made a really good left turn and there he is again uh steve lee in that red boat just keeps hanging on you know, it looks like Chris is sweeping that turn a little wider now, and, and the reason he's doing that is because I said that fuel, you know, when you turn them and pin them real hard, these things are pulling five Gs in the corner. Now, there's a little tight situation there. Everybody gets through with no problem. I imagine in the final, maybe they won't be quite as courteous to each other. They will not, I guarantee you, because it's just like the Unlimiteds. The paychecks at the end, it's winner take all, and they're going for the money. This is it. This is the final lap. They're going into a left turn right by the pit area, a very short straightaway, and then a very hard right turn. And the right turns, Chip, are a little more difficult because the propeller rotation is left hand, and when you go around a right hand turn, the propeller. Oh, not much room for Greg Foster. No, there. there was not. That was very tight. Um, so it tries to walk the back of the boat in around to make you spin out on a right hand turn. It looks like Steve Lee just can't find calm water to race in. He's been, you know, behind this whole time, so you're driving in the other boat's wakes. What does that do to you, Bill? Well, you know, if you're far enough back, but normally when you're driving somebody else's wake, the water's aerated, you lose a little a little efficiency on your propeller. Traction almost. Traction. Just traction. Just like the a wrong set of tires. Here we go. This thing. is the run to the finish. And it looks like it's Greg Foster. Terry. <laughs> I can't tell. It was Terry Rinker, Greg Foster, and Chris Fairchild all right there together. Yep. And and look at here. You got a guy now that uh, hasn't been in the top five. He just got fifth place, Mike Masco. And uh, Jose Madonna got a very bad start, but he came up to six. Well, that was it for uh, preliminary heats. Uh, Bill, who do you like going into the 15-lap final? Um, I'm going to stick my neck out, although Jose Madonna has not shown us much. He's really only had one good heat. I think Jose is going to show us something in the final. Well, you know, Jose's boat is certainly fast enough. Terry Rinker's always tough. Chris Fairchild, uh, Greg Foster, and I hope that Seabolt character shows up. What would you, if you had to guess, and I know it's only a guess at this point, what do you think's going on with Tim? I mean, he's had heats where he's out front, nobody can touch him, he's come from behind, and then there's other heats where he's just nowhere to be seen. 
Well, you know, it's it's evident from the time trials. He, you know, he was a second and three quarter faster than anybody in the in the uh, time trials. So the boat's got the speed. And like I said before, the biggest dis disadvantage he has. And in the one heat he ran yesterday, the motor fired, and he actually got off the docks with or before the Mercury's. So it's it's Murphy's law when you're racing. If something can go wrong, it will go wrong. Well, I also really like Terry Rinker. I think if there's any, been anybody that's been consistent all weekend, it's Terry Rinker. He's gotten off the dock slowly, fallen behind, come back to win. He's like come off the, the dock first and, and dominated. So right now, I think uh, Terry Rinker looks like a tough guy to beat in the final. I think there's about five guys out there that's, that could be anybody's show in that final 15 laps. And again, remember, that start's so important. You get around that first turn first, you get to pick your water. You get to pick your lane. Now, with the unlimiteds, of course, they're going to make changes before the final. What kind of changes can be made here? Well, they're just going to go through everything and check it and, and make sure the batteries are fully charged. And, and you know, they, they may make an adjustment on the EFI box. Uh, they're self-adjusting, but if they start out a, a, a one or two numbers off, they stay one or two numbers off. So they would say they'll either lean it or they could make it fatter, which means going richer. You see Terry Rinker. I think what's the most fun here is the fact that nobody's going to be courteous in the final. That's that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for some uh, trade and some paint. We've got some unofficial results for you here on the uh, F1, and they are just fun to watch. It's Amsoil Synthetics along with Seaway Marine, Mercury Racing, Bubba Burgers, and Doc's Tile, the Welch's Lawn Care X Treatment Paint. Those are the results in Heat 7. Heat 7 of F1 Racing has been brought to you by the Hyundai Santa Fe. Hello, Steve. Thanks very much. And here we are here, everybody, to announce the awards for the uh, Heat 7 here in the F1 Prop Tour. Please help me welcome at this time Rob Graham of Graham Trucking to present the award for the F1 Heat 7. Thank you very much. Just like to congratulate all of the uh, F1 guys. What a uh, outstanding weekend. The guys are just banging it up. They look great. Uh, Angela's going to come up and present the award. On behalf of Graham Trucking, I'd like to congratulate Terry Rinker and the Amstel Synthetics team for winning F1 Prop Tour Heat 7. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everybody. Uh, great run out there, and we uh, and the Amsoil teams just couldn't be happier with our performance this weekend, and uh, great to be a part of this great event. Congratulations again. Thank you so much, Rob. Back to you, Steve.